Hmm, this video smells like music theory. This is gonna be fun. Hi, my name is Paul Davids, and the planning was to make this video about seven chords. But then I thought I should first make a video about triads, because seven chords are basically extended triads. But then I thought I couldn't explain easily what a triad was if you didn't know the major scale first. And making a major scale is definitely not possible if you don't know the notes. So this video, the first in a series about chords, is about the first thing you should know if you're interested in learning music theory. Learning the musical notes and the notes on the neck. And you should, you should really learn them. And I'm gonna assume to make this video appropriate to anyone that you don't know a thing yet. But I'm not gonna take it slow, because that would just be too boring. And I think very highly of you, so let's get started. We're going to single out one guitar string and make a schematic diagram of it. So let's take the B string, the second highest string on the guitar. Okay, now let's play the first fret on the B string. That note is called a C. Let's just accept that for now. And we should know that moving the note one fret represents one semitone, also called a half step. And moving it two frets represents two semitones, or a whole step, or a whole tone. So, if we go up from C, you probably expect the D being the next note in the alphabet. And here's the thing, between the C and the D, there is another note. For now, let's call it a raised C. So we raise the C, and the name becomes a C sharp. We put a so-called accidental behind the note, raising the C by one semitone, or one fret. It's called a sharp. So the C, raised with one semitone, becomes a C sharp. Let's move this one up a semitone again. And now we're hitting the D. So between the C and the D is a distance of two semitones, or a whole step. And in between lies the C sharp, a raised C. Now we can go on from D again. And you're right, one semitone up from D is D sharp. So again, there is a note between the D and the following note of the alphabet, the E. And it's called a D sharp, a raised D. And moving one semitone up again from D sharp, we find the E. Yes, and we can always double check because the E fret 5 of the B string, is the same E as the open first string, the high E string. And that's right, it's the same note. So up till now the notes are C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. And this is the moment where it gets a bit weird. If you raise the note E by one semitone, or a half step, we land on the F. The distance from C to D, and from D to E, was a whole step. But from E to F, it's just a half step. It's just a thing you should know and remember. Have you ever seen the keys of a piano, for example? If we take a look at the keys, we started on the C. And you see that there is a black key between the C and the D, and that was the C sharp. And also between the D and the E, the D sharp. But we see there is no black key between the E and the F. So across all musical instruments, the distance from E to F is one semitone, one half step, one fret of distance on the guitar, from E to F. So if you play an open string, an open E string, the distance is again one fret from an open string to fret 1, for example. The same thing happens from B to C, but all the other notes have a whole step distance between them. So if you finish a series from E to F, and now we are at fret 6, from F, one semitone up is F sharp, 
the raised F, followed by the G, followed by the raised G, the G sharp. And there is no H in the musical alphabet. So we continue on the beginning again with A. So G, G sharp, A. And then to A sharp, B. And remember, there's just one semitone distance between B and C. So right after the B, we land on the C. But this one is one octave higher as the note we started on. So now we generated a series of notes. All the notes that occur in the Western musical system. Also called the 12th tone chromatic scale. And it doesn't matter where you start on the guitar, you always end up playing this series if you just move by half steps up or down. Let's say we start on a low E string. Well, this string is called an E string because if we play it open, the note we play is an E. So if we were to look at the string of notes, we see that after the E lies the F. And the semitone up is an F sharp. And again, the G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E again. So it's always the same notes after each other. If you were to play fret 12 on the D string, that note is a D because all fret 12s are the same notes as open strings. And if we were to move down from D, we can just follow the same schematic diagram, but then in the opposite direction, because we're going down D, C sharp, C, B, A sharp, A, G sharp, G, etc., etc. It's the same. So what you should do is make yourself feel comfortable using this series. Just like counting from 1 to 10, you know that after the 8 is the 9. You should know that after the G sharp is an A. You should know that before the D is a C sharp. It's just a matter of using it. Oh, and one more thing you should know. Until now, we used the accidental call a sharp, which raises the note by one semitone. So if we put a sharp after the G, we call it a G sharp, and it's raised by one fret. But there's also an accidental call a flat, which does the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So it lowers the note by one semitone. So if we were to play an A, for example, fret 5 on the E string, if we put a flat behind the A, it lowers the note by one semitone. So A becomes A flat. So fret 4 on the E string can be called a G sharp or an A flat. And it all depends on the context we're playing in. And you shouldn't worry about that right now. And it's the same note. It sounds the same for us, but theoretically it's used different. But as I said, don't worry about that just yet. So if you feel comfortable playing this in the next video, we'll be talking about the major scale, the real fundament of all music theory. So definitely stay tuned for that lesson. A written transcript as well as some PDF examples are found on my Patreon page. So take a look over there if you find this lesson fun or inspirational or you learn something hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to see the future videos of this series have a wonderful day cheers